Memorial Day flood along the Blanco is one of the worst that we've ever experienced. On the other hand, we're known as Flash Flood Alley. We've, we've gone through a cycle of devastation here in this area. I'll just never get used to this. It's just a scene of ruin. We have recurring serious drought, and every now and then we get these big, serious, devastating floods. We're caught in this cycle between extreme flooding and drought, and that's exacerbated for us today because we're the fastest growing uh, community in the United States. Hayes County is one of the fastest growing counties in the country, so we've just had a lot more development in this area. Our house is in the 500-year floodplain. A lot of people want to have riverfront property. They want to be close to that beautiful stream. But in Texas, about half of the flood damage is attributed to uh, damage that occurs outside of the 100-year floodplain. One of the most significant impacts of the growth that we're experiencing is the alteration of our riparian areas, which are the natural systems along our rivers and streams. So we have more and more houses coming in, and that means more roads, more driveways, more pavement, which sheds the water off of our land instead of collecting it. And so every time there's a new parking lot or the landscape is altered, we potentially increase the impact of these horrible floods when they do come. Besides the Blanco, the hill country is home to numerous streams and rivers feeding into six catchment basins prone to flash flooding thanks to steep sloping limestone and in some cases granite terrain. Left alone, natural riparian zones of tall, deep-rooted grasses, shrubs, and trees can not only help reduce some of the destructive force of typical flood events, but trap floodwaters in the alluvial water table and ensure continued stream flow during periodic droughts. The riparian area actually helps deal with both of those extremes. According to riparian expert Steve Nelly and others, the Blanco River flood of 2015 was so massive that it was sure to do damage. Still, healthy riparian areas can help buffer the destructiveness of most flood events. A healthy riparian floodplain is full of dense vegetation. It physically helps to slow that water down. It serves to slow down floodwaters. It serves to stabilize banks. It serves to increase recharge into the ground as opposed to accelerating runoff. And all of those negative issues are magnified when riparian vegetation is removed and replaced with something else. Over time, nature builds a protective buffer along stream banks, composed of a variety of native plants and grasses. During droughts, root systems deepen to reach lower water tables, building reinforcing structure for banks and stream beds and buffering those same banks during floods, helping catch sediments to grow succeeding generations of plants. Unfortunately, the first thing many people do when they buy riverfront property is cut down those native plants and install urban landscapes for a better view of the water. It's typically best to just leave it natural because the natural trees and vegetation are there and have been created by millions of years of evolution of floods and droughts along that stream. The Memorial Day weekend flood got rolling with 15 inches of rain over 48 hours falling on Chris Hale's Norco Ranch in Kendall County, near the headwaters of the Blanco. The riparian conditions make an enormous difference. And although the flood crest was much higher and more destructive many miles downstream, when the river began overflowing its banks here, the established riparian vegetation did its job of slowing down the water and capturing debris and sediment. A few weeks later, the river here was back to normal. We have such good, thick riparian vegetation that it did its job of catching debris and now it's taken some of that debris and saved it and parked it and it'll decompose and it'll do nothing but enrich the riparian conditions going forward. I can look down for probably half a mile 
of open meadow, and this is not meadow land. This is wild river land. Charles Cresswell's Blanco River home is located directly adjacent to the Fisher Store Road Bridge in Hayes County, one of several bridges destroyed in the 2015 Memorial Day weekend flood. I'll never forget that night. It was just overwhelming. It was dark, couldn't really see the river, but the roar was like nothing I've ever heard. Bill Johnson's ranch is 28 miles downstream from the Fisher Store Road Bridge and bore the full effects of the Blanco flood. Oh boy, this, uh, this was in the deep woods and now it's way out in the open. Almost all of the pecans of our pecan bottom down here are gone. Back at the Fisher Store Road Bridge, Charles Cresswell worries that the loss of riparian vegetation contributed to the flood's destructiveness. Upstream, there's only a few houses, so it's pretty wild. Downstream, it's the meadow. People that have bought Riverside and Creekside property, they naturally want to enjoy it. They want to have access. They want to, many times, they want to make it look like their backyard. At one point, we had a deck here as part of our manicured property. When you manicure a Riverside property, and then when the floodwaters come, there's no resistance. And that's what I don't want to see here on the Blanco is, is this become just kind of a manicured floodway. When it becomes uh, property after property, mile after mile, it has a cumulative effect. Cresswell, thanks to the flood, now sees the value of having taller, rougher, more resilient natural riparian plants to buffer his property from normal periodic flooding giving the river the room it needs. Rivers have to be given enough room to operate. They need room to meander. They need room to flood. They need those floodplains so that the slower water can get out and slow down and drop sediments. Prior to the flood, Bill Johnson had been working with the Nature Conservancy to encourage growth of riparian plants on the banks of the Blanco. And even though the record 2015 flood peak did a lot of damage, Mother Nature will quickly restore the native vegetation. We're never going to probably be able to do anything to mitigate the kind of massive flood that they had on Memorial Day, but for the more common, normal type floods, land management makes a big difference. Aside from displacing natural riverbanks with urbanized landscapes, the normal function of riparian areas can be adversely affected by man-made incursions, such as bulldozing upland terrain for residential and commercial development, poorly designed roadways and dams, allowing livestock to overgraze stream banks, as well as overgrazing and overbrowsing by native and exotic animals like white-tailed deer and axis deer over pumping of wells dug into riparian water tables, and even too much human foot traffic. For the past 12 years, it's been illegal to drive recreational vehicles in freshwater stream beds in Texas, and the recovery has been readily apparent. Laws were passed to prohibit that. The riparian area started to recover. Sky Louie documented the recovery of one section of the Nueces River near her family's ranch, where, at the same time, they also restricted livestock access to the river. We've spent no money. We stopped driving. We stopped grazing. We started to watch what came back. We have to be patient. Nature's going to recover that area at her own timetable, in her own way, and we think that it's best to accommodate that natural process of recovery. That means not removing logs and organic debris that accumulates after floods, but leaving them as anchors and foundations for sediment collection and new colonies of riparian plants, bringing in or just letting native tall grasses, shrubs and trees grow up and fill out. The result will not only be a functioning riparian area, but many would say a more aesthetically pleasing landscape. Along a creek tributary of the Nueces River near Uvalde, Texas, rootstock for flood-resistant eastern gamma grass is being planted along the banks to help grow a robust riparian vegetation zone. There very much is a compromise for us 
here on the Blanco River. 150 miles east in Wimberley, residents are meeting with representatives of the Texas Department of Parks and Wildlife and the Nature Conservancy to find out how they can do the same to protect themselves from major floods, like the one on Memorial Day weekend 2015. I think we can find a happy medium there where people get to enjoy their river, they see the river, they use the river and their river banks, but the river also has native vegetation. That means instead of carpet grass stretching unchecked from house to river, residents are being advised to allow tall natural riparian vegetation to line the river bank and install a pathway to the water through a riparian buffer, much like the river access trail on Bill Neiman's ranch along the Llano River in Junction. We've got about a mile of riverfront here on this ranch, and this is our access point. It's five feet wide. And it leads to a riverbank that is home to a wide variety of native riparian plants. We've intentionally left tall vegetation, mixed grasses. Here we also have switchgrass, as stable as the eastern gamma grass. How stable? In this example, eastern gamma and switchgrass with root systems as deep as 15 feet are thriving a month after the flood that knocked down nearby ancient cypress trees surrounded only by closely mowed, non-native carpet grass. Stability begins in the uplands where the first raindrops fall. Riparian areas rely on a community of specialized native vegetation working together. When cypress trees are surrounded by tall riparian grasses and woody plants, their roots interlock to create a reinforcing network to resist flood damage. There is no way that you can get these out of the ground. Bill Neiman grows switchgrass and eastern gamma grass and other riparian plants on his seed farm. The roots of native tall grasses can anchor soil as well as a large boulder which explains why his son Weston is having a hard time digging one up, even with a pickaxe. The density of this root mass is just almost indestructible. It can stand up to big floods, really big floods. Consensus among experts is that it's best to have the vast majority of river and stream banks covered with strong, stable native riparian plants, like emery sedge and eastern gamma grass, woody plants like buttonbush, and trees like pecan and, of course, bald cypress. An extensive list of plants can be found at RemarkableRepairian.org. If you think back half of a millennium, five centuries, how could it be that plants like this could survive? Neiman is standing near an ancient live oak not far from the Llano Riverbank, marveling at what nature can do without human interference. And yet in the background, we hear bulldozers on the other side of the river taking trees away. Invading, cutting back, and remaking native riparian areas into urban-looking landscapes, laying down impervious ground cover, and clearing upland terrain for development all lead to accelerated runoff and more damaging flood events. When homes are built anywhere in or close to the floodplain, lives and property are put in jeopardy. The Hill Country Alliance thinks it's time to step back and let Mother Nature do her thing, to give our streams and rivers the room they need to ebb and flow and meander and grow thick and tall with native riparian vegetation. It's the best way to ensure the health and beauty of the streams and rivers that make the Hill Country so special.